we are born from some of the greatest people that ever lived. Mm. We owe our success to people like Mansa Musa. Black people have always been great. Black people have had kingdoms, they've mm. always had wealth, they've yeah. always grown empires, you know? Yeah. So if we're able to draw our narrative from the black people before us, that shifts and changes us and we start to dream and think bigger. What's up guys, how are you doing today? It's Tyre I know here again and I'm currently in Cape Town, South Africa and beside me is Mr. Becky who is the founder and CEO of Curiosity which is an accommodation and travel company located in South Africa. So how are you doing today sir? How are you doing champ? <laughs> You're well. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice meeting you too. Uh, you have a very beautiful establishment here. How did this like whole vision get started, this yeah. curiosity? It starts at a very young age of 16, mm. where I was doing walking tours of Johannesburg. So okay. the journey really begins in Johannesburg. Oh, okay. And after doing these walking tours, I then realized that people were looking for more meaningful and deeper experiences than just mm. coming on a tour for three hours yeah, and fly yeah, off yeah. or run away yeah. to the northern suburbia. They wanted yeah. to connect and immerse mm. themselves and really feel like they're part of a community. So the idea of then basically creating an accommodation space was born from that. Okay. So I opened the first Curiosity when I was 21 in oh, really? Johannesburg in Maboneng. How were you able to fund that? How did you raise funding for that? Yeah. You know, I was very lucky and I think I was at the right space at the right time. Hmm. What was happening in Johannesburg is that this area known as Maboneng was going through a lot of urban regeneration. Hmm. So a lot of investors, people were putting in money there, oh, okay. changing the narrative of Joburg, you know, with art galleries, restaurants, bars, rooftops, and you've been there. So yeah. you know yeah. the spirit of the that spirit area. Of, yeah, yeah. And I think, yeah, I was there at the right time, at the right place, and I was already starting to take people on my tours. And through that journey, really, I was able to get exposed to funders. And I was pitching, you know, my curiosity story and vision. From early inception, I was able to get a bit of cash injection. So that funded my first property. Oh, and okay. that's where we then basically birthed curiosity. So the journey begins there in Maboneng on Fox Street. We've got other assets there. So we've got curiosity. We've got 12 Decades Art Hotel, which is a boutique hotel. And then mm. we've got Fox Street Studio which are luxury penthouses oh, wow. and like your scale was then born and breathed from then and we started saying listen how do we take this concept across South Africa so we went and opened Durban which ran for a good four years we opened that in the year 2016 and then in the year 2019 we then opened Curiosity Cape Town mm. and then an hour out of Johannesburg we now have a farmhouse which is more of a wellness retreat, which you must definitely come visit. Oh, okay, no, yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, and the vision really is to grow short term across South Africa. So we're opening up a few more sites in Cape Town, mm. in Kruger National Park. Oh, wow. And then more medium and long term into the rest of the continent. I think to bring it back, you know, I believe that we are all descendants of African griots, mm. storytellers, writers, poets. Mm. And I guess you and I, what joins us at the hip is yeah. the ability to share story stories yeah. of these spaces, of these areas, and, and let the youth, particularly black youth, yeah. share the narrative of these spaces. Exactly. So we work with a lot of local tour guides, local artists when we do all the new sites, local furniture designers mm. to share these stories that, stories. Are, that shape our communities. Before we continue, I'd love to briefly talk about the sponsor of today's video, Epidemic Sound. One of my secrets to telling great stories is music, and Epidemic Sound gives me access to restriction-free music and sound effects to use on all my platforms without ever having to worry about it being taken down or demonetized. It really doesn't matter what social media platform you create for, whether IG, TikTok, or Facebook, as long as you have an Epidemic Sound personal plan, you are covered. One of my problems with finding great music is usually the amount of time spent short through hundreds of sounds and most of the time you end up coming up empty and it can get really frustrating. Epidemic Sound has a great filter to search from a large catalog of artists and new tracks are always added every week. With 35,000 tracks and over 90,000 sound effects, the variety is endless, allowing me to always find that perfect sound for my videos. You can even find a song based on mood or theme. If you listen to a sound and you don't like it, you can click on Find Similar to get a variety of suggestions in the same genre or that has a similar vibe. What are you waiting for? Click the link in the description for a 30-day free trial. I use the exclusive discount code TIRE50 for a 50% discount on the personal plan when paying annually. It's valid until the 30th of June, so be quick. 
Now let's jump right back into today's video. Did you always have this vision when you when you started out? Yeah, man, I think, you know, I, I owe a lot to my grandmother. She instilled, I think, the entrepreneurial edge in me from a very young age, hmm. you know? Um, just the ability to wake up and get things done. Hmm. So I learned that from her. I never knew that it will manifest to become what curiosity is, hmm. you know? I thought maybe one day I'll have a jazz lounge, you know? I grew oh. up in a, in a fascinating neighborhood hmm. with a lot of artists, rebels of great consciousness, the best minds of our time. Hmm. And that's what shaped really my passion for what I do, right? So I never thought it will manifest to curiosity, but I think in, in my teenage years, I then get a, got exposed to a lot of entrepreneurs who were like expanding, scaling. Hmm. And that started making me think that how does one really breathe and born a, a concept? and scale it, hmm. you know? Um, so I think being exposed to different entrepreneurs, we're changing the narrative of Johannesburg, we're, you know, buying up properties, developing them. It then also realized and made me think that, listen, we need to develop concepts that grow beyond lines of demarcation set between us. So there's a few parallels. My grandmom really instilling almost an entrepreneurial edge in me hmm. and then being exposed, you know, like to mentors and entrepreneurs that have really also helped me just think beyond and say, how do we take small concepts and industrialize them and make them blue chip companies? Hmm. And obviously there's different inspirations that I learned from other different brands and other concepts and other entrepreneurs across the world. But I think for me, it's about you know, we, we've grown in communities where you've got a spaza shop. In South Africa, we call yeah, them spaza. spaza shop. Yeah, and um, it, it's either your grandmom runs that, your mom runs that, you run that. And for me, it's about how do we scale these businesses? How do yeah. we scale them and make them blue chip companies? So where are we currently at now? This is Greenpoint here. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's this place, what's Greenpoint known for? Quite accessible, it's sandwiched between the CBD hmm. as well as Seapoint. We right across the Greenpoint Park. And where the Greenpoint Park used to be, that used to be called the Common Fields. In Common World War Fields. II, a lot of soldiers used to basically have their campsites there. So that's why we've called our coffee shop our Common, to oh. reappropriate that history and play around. Hmm. But you'll see, I mean, from the facade, I've worked with Zabalaza Designs, spearheaded by Atam Chikare, a hmm. black artist and furniture designer based here in Cape Town. So we're very, very intentional about basically the work and the people that we bring in to collaborate, work with us, and be part of the curiosity experience. Okay. So yeah, let's oh, walk nice. in. So it's our reception area. As I say, we're quite intentional about our collaboration. You'll see, you know, like the literature that we've put in into some of the rooms and the common spaces. This is, comes from a very, very important part of South Africa and Africa. It's called Chimuranga, hmm. which is a Pan-African bookstore, but hmm. also they do events and activities there. Yeah. And then obviously the local merchandise as well. You'll see here I'm paying homage to the neighborhoods that Curiosity has ever been in, you know. So Maboneng, obviously, Eteguini's, Durban, Wig Town mm. is just a street that was here. Yeah. And then, you know, and then people can <laughs> skate, grab a yoga mat. We've got actually, again, you know, as I was saying, part of the literature. This lady, um, Boipelo, she basically backpacked across 54 countries in Africa. We need to be able to cultivate and grow entrepreneurs that think of scale. Mm. You know, where it's like, listen, just because you're born in this community doesn't mean your concept needs to die in this community. You can actually build strong businesses that can grow across Africa. There's a lot of celebrity entrepreneurs, a yeah, lot of fecal <laughs> facade stuff. True. And I think we need to be preaching a better vision and a better angle towards entrepreneurship. Where like if you're an entrepreneur, it's not just all flashy and glossy mm -hmm. and you know, yeah. it's real work. It's real work. And if you look at some of the wealthiest people, you know, they've they've gone deep and dived in into their businesses and models and it's not just fancy from the outside. So we need to be really grooming and growing a strong entrepreneurial edge. And if we're able to do that, then will have a thriving sector, uh, not just only in tourism, but across other forms of entrepreneurship. Most of the big hotels, resorts are owned by white companies. Yeah. How do you feel we can yeah. change that narrative? What do you think we can do about that? Yeah, I mean, listen, I think, you know, we are born from some of the greatest people that ever lived. Hmm. You know, we owe our success to people like Mansa Musa. Black people have always been great. Black people have had kingdoms, they've mm. always had wealth, they've yeah. always grown empires, you know? Yeah. So if we're able to draw a narrative from the black people before us, mm. that shifts and changes us and we start to dream and think bigger. It took me six years knocking on doors to eventually break down and come into Cape Town. And there were lines of demarcation set that didn't allow me you know like i'll mm. come and like meet landlords developers and they're like oh where's your boss i'm like what you talking about 
I am my he boss, was. you know? And I think also, I think growing businesses where you've got strong teams around you, hmm. you know? Um, it took me at least three years in my business to understand that, oh, I need to bring in a CFO, I yeah. need to bring in a CMO, I need to... So if you're able to build strong organizations and surround yourself with the right team, hmm. then you're able to scale your business itself. You know, in the beginning, it was me doing everything as the founder, CEO, running the bar, yeah. doing this. But then eventually, start surrounding yourself with the right team and that's how you scale your ideas and concepts. So you need to build a strong top line hmm. in order for your bottom line to be even stronger and bigger. Very valid point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is our common. You'll see there's an artwork by Ryan Shava, who's a local artist here. Hmm. So he's played around here. Sarah Grace done some work here. So really the space, you know, during the morning is a space where people can come co-work. Great hmm. for digital nomads. We are yeah. wanting to really work from here uh, and then in the afternoons we then curate different activities whether it's a bright night, mm -hmm. um, whether it's a family dinner, um, movie night or poetry readings. So in total we've got 30, some are two bedroom units and that's what makes this product quite unique. It's an apartment hotel style. Mm -hmm. So you could have your own, you know, deluxe room to mm -hmm. private room mm -hmm. with your own kitchenette and your own lounge area. So we also have basically almost our shared co-living spaces. This is for like digital nomads, people are backpacking around the world who wanna, you know, like stay with other mm -hmm. people and connect. So yeah. the way in which I've basically designed the business model is that it's got dynamic pricing. Hmm. Whether you're an 18 year old backpacking around the world or a C suite executive, you know, who's read about us hmm. or seen us on your YouTube, YouTube channel, channel yeah. and they wanna come and connect with mm -hmm. these spaces, you know? Um, so it's really to cater for everyone from all walks of life. Can you just talk a little bit about some of the challenges you faced in even getting properties as a black person in yeah, South Africa? Sure. One, you know, we're not born with strong balance sheets or someone who'll sign surety yeah, for you okay. and so forth, you know? Okay. And as I say that I owe a bit of my success really to the mentors that have been around me because they've been able to open doors for me, okay. you know? So one of the mentors really that played an instrumental role to me is a gentleman called Jonathan Liedman who started the Maboneng development and oh, so forth. Okay. And through knowing him, he had major interest in me and he wanted to mentor me and make sure that I thrive and be a better human being. So knowing him, he was able to open doors for me and say, oh, you need to meet this kid. Mm. He's got a really cool concept. And so through that, I was able to diversify and start, you know, seeing different opportunities. And then obviously now, you know, we've just went through probably the most traumatic times in our yeah. lives, you know, in, in travel with the yeah. pandemic. And before that, I mean, it's not like we're trading in, in great times, you know, yeah. it, was, it was a challenge. challenge Anything yeah. from 2008 until recently, True. it's been a challenge, you know, so we're learning a bit now about franchising. Mm -hmm. So when we start, maybe when we come to Nigeria, yeah. you know, we do sites together <laughs> yeah, there, no, you know? We so there'll be power to really, really do something yeah. there. Um, we, you know, as I said, we want to grow across Africa. Mm. We want to be in slam dunk locations in Africa and partner with local youth. Mm. You know, we're passionate about entrepreneurship, hospitality and travel, and see how we really break down these man-made borders okay. through travel. True. So I want curiosity to be that vehicle that really breaks down these borders that have been set within Africa. So you can imagine like, you know, you land in South Africa yeah. and you are here for 30 days yeah. and you've got a travel passport with curiosity, curiosity. that takes you through True. across Africa. That would be amazing. That's a very amazing, that's a big vision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I love that. Yeah. What kind of background are you from? I was raised by my grandmother. Hmm. I was raised then later on by my mother. Uh, so I come from a, a strong, you know, foundation of just women that mm. do things, you know. Oh, so we're raised by a single mom. I'm the eldest in my family. I'm 30 years old now oh, and I've got two younger brothers. Being raised, I think, by a single parent yeah. you and being the eldest in my family, you need to provide for the family. So mm. you learn really survival skills from a very young age. And the neighborhood that I grew up in, in Johannesburg, is called Troyville. Troyville yeah, okay. and we grew up in a block of flats called Barrel Court. And within that building, you know, there were a lot of filmmakers, 
There were a lot of writers, black intellects, people were well-traveled. Mm. Some of them that know Africa better than any Pan-Africanist that I've come to. Mm. And I think being exposed to such minds and my community, I started then thinking that I can grow and think bigger. And then in my teen years, I then got exposed to these entrepreneurs that were just shifting and changing things. And as I said, you know, I like, I'm guided and guarded by my grandmother. So every opportunity that's come in, it's through her guidance. And I think just my passion and being able to really, you know, when I meet entrepreneurs wanting to learn, learn that's opened them. doors for me, you know. Mm. And now I've been able to build at least, you know, a business that's got a strong balance sheet, a brand that's now recognized within our sector. Mm. You know, it's become like a blue chip. Mm. So it, it's just through really, you know, like from just grassroots level. Yeah perseverance, resilience, mm. hard work. And those are skills that I think no school can teach you. Those are skills and qualities that you take from home. You know, it's qualities and skills that my grandmother passed on to me. You know, the ability to say, wake up before the sun rises. Yeah, yeah. You know, she used to wake up before the sun rises. She's gone to markets to buy fruits and veggies. She tried to put me to the best school so that I learn and think bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, so all those things play the part to where I'm at right now, you know? It seems like a large part of this vision or ideas came from Mabune. Yeah, so you know when I was doing my walking tours, yeah. it was like, I started off doing it on weekends, it okay. was like a side business, yeah. you know, I actually studied photojournalism. So my dream oh, really? was to actually travel across Africa and tell stories. So oh, really? that's why I said, you know, the story <laughs> thing has... Oh, uh, wow. So basically, has, like, what you want to do is what I'm doing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know, Maboneng started in 2008, hmm. and it was basically one developer buying up properties, converting them into cool spaces. Hmm. And I think what it did is that it created a foundation for entrepreneurship. Hmm. And so I owe a lot of my success to that neighborhood because being able to see another black entrepreneur who's got a restaurant, another black mm. entrepreneur with a rooftop bar, with an art gallery, you're coming together all in this area mm. with a common vision to change the narrative change of the city. Part of the curiosity journey, people spend maximum six hours in bed, True. but they're out exploring and engaging and immersing, you know, so we offer a wide range of activities, mm. whether, you know, in Cape Town from pop-up storytelling dinners, to mm. Sundays reawakening your senses, to meditative mm. hikes, to the black route, you know. You mm. met Yanga that does some of our tours. We obviously also, you know, take people from Cape Town to Johannesburg or Cape Town to the Cradle. So it's really, it's an experiential led brand. Mm. And that's what makes us unique. You know, they say the devil is in the detail. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and when you look at these headboards, they've got a colonial arc structure like the buildings you find in Greenpoint. Oh, yeah. So we went out into the neighborhood and said how do we bring in some of that DNA that shapes this neighborhood hmm. into the interior. Hmm. But I've gone and put an African fabric to decolonize the colonial arc architecture that's there. Oh wow. Ooh. Oh, the view, the view. With the mountain view on a clear day. You know? This is a is this is this, this is Signal Hill. Signal Hill, yeah. okay. Signal, so you've got signal, and then behind on a clear day, you see a uh, lion's head. Lion's head. Yeah. So, where do you see yourself, let's say, in the next five, ten years? Yeah. And how do you also see travel in Africa in the next five, ten years? In the next five years, we're probably maybe going to have another 20 locations across Africa. How many locations do you have now? Currently, we've got six properties. Hmm. We're just about to announce um, our second property in Cape Town. Oh, which nice. will be opening in August. So we've got a, a massive pipeline in Cape Town that we're growing. And then we're chatting to other entrepreneurs in Ghana, in Tanzania, in Victoria Falls. In Nigeria. In Nigeria, <laughs> you know. So we'll create a curiosity in Nigeria yeah. that will create its own neighborhood there. That will be, that will be good. Uh, Did you ever have any problem with getting access to it? Yeah, to no, this, constantly, this man. I think, you know, I mean, a good example. So in Cape Town, Yeah. We're in probably one of the best locations, Greenpoint. Yeah, exactly. You know, That's sandwich right. <laughs> between the city and yeah. the sea point. Yeah. So some of the challenges, I mean, I've got white neighbors, for yeah. example. Yeah. And for them to see that there's a black brand next to them yeah. is unheard of. You know, yeah. I had a neighbor before who was like shouting here and I was like, hey, get out of my property. Do you know who I am? And for him, he, hadn't, he had never been challenged by a black person. Hmm. So it's those small little things, yeah. you know? They happen on a day-to-day -day hmm. in, in South Africa. You know, I'm a Pan-Africanist. Hmm. I, I was raised by Pan-Africanists, you know? I subscribe to a Pan-Africanist school of thought. You're challenged every day by whiteness, but you need to put it in its place and you need to understand where it belongs and where it sits. As I said earlier, you know, we're not in the old regime here. 
We're in a new South Africa. The land is ours. You know, the way in which banks evaluate you in relation to whiteness are two different things, you know. My white friends can have their father sign surety for them, can have their father sign, but I can't. I'm starting from ground zero. I'm creating a new foundation for the next legacy. So it's very relevant and every day, you know, in Cape Town when you walk into a restaurant, the way in which people look it's at you as a you. black person, yeah. you know, it's like you're in subordinate mm -hmm. and you're like, do you know who you're dealing with? You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> you know who you're dealing so with? So all those things are day-to-day -day yeah. fabrics that we need to dismantle, you know? Part of the curiosity vision is it's about decolonizing how business is done. Hmm. It's about decolonizing funding in Africa. It's about decolonizing the structures that are set you know, and making it accessible. What I hope one day, you know, we do with this business is that we have an offspring out of it where we're able to create a tourism fund hmm. that's able to fund new emerging entrepreneurs hmm. into tourism and where we look at funding different to how the current funding structures are. If you could change one thing about Africa, what would it be? If there was one thing I could change, man, it would be just to drop all the border sets between hmm. our countries, you know, and create one language that binds us all hmm. you know whether it's Swahili yeah. or a reimagined yeah. language yeah um, have one currency for Africa hmm. um, just to to unite us you know as I said you know we, we are all descendants of African griots and we need to be able I think to speak from a common vision hmm. a common goal yeah and you know we need to see ourselves we we the best continent you know we've got the best resources True. and they could be utilized better and differently what would be your advice to a lot of young Africans out there? South yeah. Africans, Nigerians, everybody in Africa. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think it's important to, to find something that you truly believe in mm. and stick to it, you know? Um, we live in a, a world of just instant gratification. True. You know, we're on our apps and it's cool to see concepts and stuff. But I think finding something that you truly believe in and putting your 110% into it. You know, mm. for me, it was curiosity. And I took a conscious decision at age 21 that this is something I'll do for the rest of my life. Yes, it will diversify, you know, into different forms. It will scale, it will, but it's something that I was like, listen, we need to build and grow strong businesses that even after our time, people can still talk of, Yeah. you know? And a lot of entrepreneurs have done it, you know? So find something that you really believe in and put all your efforts into it. There's a lot of bubblegum stuff out there and it's important for us to grow. Strong people, strong organizations, not just only change our perspectives, but the entire world's perspective on Africa. Thank Appreciate you for it. sharing your story with us. I'm sure a lot yeah. of people out there have learned a lot from your story. I'm definitely going to link all the pages to Curiosity down in the description below. So definitely if you're coming to South Africa, check out the links in the description. Contact them. That's where I basically stayed or I stayed in <laughs> Cape Town. So guys, that's all I have to share with you today. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.